<laughs> Tommy, no. <laughs> Tommy, did you do that, Tommy? No. Tommy did I it. I might have. I thought he did it. Oh, come on, everybody. This is no reason to lose your head. Welcome back to the new rock stars. Oh, and my God. The Breakdown of the Boys, Season 2, Episode 7. Butcher, Baker, Candlestick Maker. I'm Tommy Bechtold, and this is the Boys Underground. Boys only, except for 33% of us are women. Yeah. The after show that stays socially distant so that we're out of the head pop splash zone. With me to share his thoughts on Vought is Ooh. the brain just a little too meaty to pop is Eric Voss. Hello, Eric. Ooh, thank God. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for having me back. Uh, if this week couldn't get insane enough, uh, 2020 just keeps on going. Really? Yes. And, of course, our Kill Count expert who had her work really cut out for her this week, Marina Mastros. Hello, Marina. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Woo. back. Yeah. Hey, we're all back. The three amigos. Yes. Look at us. A team, eight. The boys and girl are yeah. back in town. The three. <laughs> I, I call us the three. Uh, like the seven, but we're, yeah, the, yeah, we're, yeah. The, we're the three, given that uh, we all have oh, we, we all have dark secrets. Uh, okay, so let's begin this episode on a personal note. Uh, a loner named Tommy gets radicalized, uh, and you got to see, for me, watching a, an episode of television where a overweight man named Tommy is radicalized by the news really hit home. <laughs> Not only could I relate to that character, because he's very good to his mama, as am I, but also he uh, frequently buys snacks and uh, has a lot of screen time throughout the day so basically what i'm saying is whoever was my manager at the time this episode was filmed right. is fired for not getting me in on I that i was gonna say you should have been cast where were you yai, yai, yai. <laughs> all right you're out anyway so our episode summary going back to business a loner named tommy gets radicalized by Stormfront's xenophobic memes and shoots a store clerk thinking he's a soup terrorist that whole opening sequence was intense and uh, upsetting and yeah. all kidding aside it was like so tonally like i mean obviously re like not relatable but like realistic not not in the shooting part yeah. but in the radicalization through memes and stuff like that oh it just made me it happens that is what happens yeah uh, on a weird positive note about that scene mm. um <laughs> my friend like he's like an acquaintance in improv in canada he's like an actor mm -hmm. is the guy is chris siddiqui i think is his name and he's uh the cl the clerk the guy who gets oh, shot. No. <laughs> so even though it's like such a up scene, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, dude. yes, <laughs> yes, get that money. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it's always weird when you have friends who get killed on a TV show because you're like, yeah, awesome, you're like, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Rock yes. on, dude. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Well, good on you. Uh, very, very, very sad, very sad, sad, yeah. sad, very sad. but uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's a fictional television show, so no one in that actual scene committed murder or was really murdered in real life. Uh, I yep. know we all know that, anyway, Mallory. <laughs> and, the, uh, and the others plan to use, they, they're still executing their plan to use Lamplighter and Jonah Vogelbaum to testify against Vought at Congressman Newman's hearing, but Starlight is captured by Black Noir, so Huey and Lamplighter have to team up to break her free. Real dream team of uh, white superhero hunks. Yeah. Uh, okay. No time for porn. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After watching well, an, some time for yeah. porn. an incredible amount of time for porn, I would say. They were through multiple titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think yeah. I've ever watched a 20 minute porn clip to its entirety uh these guys watch full dvds yeah uh, anyway that's just a little bit about my viewing habits butcher reconnects with his mom and dad very nice heartwarming scene between butcher and his dad butcher blames his brother lenny's suicide on their dad's toughness which uh th that whole scene was also kind of hard to watch because we're getting a little uh gaze into yeah. the dysfunction of uh william butcher homelander yeah uh brings his girlfriend to meet his son, which, uh, as, a, as I've said before, as a child of divorce, always an uncomfortable thing uh, when you meet your dad's new uh, lady friend. They watch Ryan's charming Lego reenactments of the blind side. He says oh he did God, terms so of it. I mean, that part. I really want to see Dances with Wolves yeah. so badly. <laughs> that part to me was so funny because, like, the like other than the blind side, the movies that he was referencing are 30 and 40 years old. So these are not recent titles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this kid is this kid is nine watching movie. Yeah. Anyway, Homelander and and Stormfront seem genuinely embarrassed by this kid's <laughs> hobby. Like they're like, this is 
some nerd shit. Anyway, <laughs> the two of them uh, plot to replace Becca as Ryan's parents, and then they reveal to Ryan that he's living on the compound and that his whole life is basically a lie. They then take Ryan away, leaving his mother Becca in tears, opening the door for Butcher to slide back in. Uh, Lamplighter uh, uses uh, his knowledge of Vaught Tower to uh, trick Huey into thinking they're going to rescue Starlight, but as soon as they get there, it's revealed that he just led him to the statue shrine of the Seven uh, so that he could self-immolate, uh, burn himself alive. But Maeve is able to help Starlight and her mom and Huey escape, and Black Noir, we learn, has a tree nut allergy in a very uh, humorous scene. <laughs> God, I thought we... Funny. I really nuts. thought we were going to get the reveal of who Black Noir is. I mean... I kind of feel like, what, there's one episode left? Yeah, one yeah. left. There's one episode left, and I don't feel like we have sufficient setup for the mystery of who Black Noir is going to be, and now I feel like it's going to be a season three reveal. Anyway, at the congressional <laughs> hearing, heads explode, like Rainer Oof. back in episode one. Uh, Vogelbaum dies. A-Train's replacement Shockwave dies. A ton of other people die and get sprayed with blood as Homelander and Stormfront look around uh, apparently confused. It does appear that they are genuinely confused by this, so so what do you guys think? Uh, what a crazy ending to the episode, though. Tommy and I were talking beforehand. Yeah. Like when, as soon as they showed Rainer's head explosion yeah. in the pre-roll previously on, we knew yeah. we, on, <laughs> we knew this whole episode someone's head was gonna pop, <laughs> yep. and that made us so anxious the whole time. Uh -huh. There were so many jump scares this episode. The the gut wrenching horror of this show yep. knows no bounds. Mm -hmm. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be gut wrenching and stuff, but I was like, oh god. Damn! Yeah, like. yeah, <laughs> yeah. The tr the the correct response is somewhere between Marina and me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was watching it like a, a little uh, scared boy who, who every time there was even a remotely a moment of suspense, I was like, that's gonna explode, and I was hiding my head and I was pausing and rewinding. It was an embarrassing spectacle. You were wearing a helmet the whole time watching. Yes, abso <laughs> yeah. absolutely. If I wear a helmet, my yes. brain yeah. can't pop. That's right. I put I put tin foil all over my head but accidentally in front of my face too yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I couldn't see it or breathe yeah between this and uh batman v superman yeah. it's like you can't have a congressional hearing without something horrible <laughs> no, happening. no no ab absolutely not absolutely not we do have five theories for who was pulling the strings of the head pinatas but i'm gonna break down the top 10 major easter eggs visual details that you might have missed from this episode starting with the episode title butcher baker candlestick maker uh is a title from the comic storyline in which Butcher attends his dad's funeral, and it's kind of working out his uh, daddy issues with his dad's body. Uh, as you know, he kind of works through those issues in the subplot of this episode. In the comics, he pees on his dad's corpse, which is something that Butcher suggests doing in this episode. He ain't got much longer, a couple of months. Tell me what happens. I'll piss on his coffin. Now, the deeper history of the episode title is, of course, the whole nursery rhyme. Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub. And who do you think they'll be? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, all of them out to sea. Which originated, <laughs> I looked this up, in the 14th century when the term rub-a-dub-dub -dub was the most hilarious way of saying tisk-tisk, oh. hinting at naughty behavior. Rub-a-dub-dub! <laughs> really? dub. Yes. A tub <laughs> was a word at the time for a peep show. So the idea mm. of it is oh. it doesn't matter if if you're a butcher or a baker or a candlestick maker, all men in society have the same dirty desires, Everybody's dirty gotta secrets. Uh, yeah, 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 everyone's well. got a rub a dub dub. Uh, <laughs> and I think the fun part of this episode is how big of a role porn plays in it and porn parodies. It is kind of like the recurring motif of the episode. Lamplighter's got a whole bag filled with these porn DVDs. And if you think about it, the whole commentary is this idea of climax driven media desensitizing us. Like all these characters are kind of desensitized and fittingly the finale of the episode the boys are watching on screen cozying up together on a couch with popcorn this head popping climax uh and it's like the whole episode is kind of this gross peep show that we all rub a dub dub to as we're watching <laughs> oh yuck yeah at least <laughs> i do not Tommy. i do not false all right, in the next detail, let's talk about this whole prologue sequence. It was amazing. This character, Tommy Peterson, is played by Charlie Kuntz, who played Fat Neil on Community. Uh, and in that episode, it's the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Neil plays a struggling nerd that the study group tries to help out with a D&D &D campaign, and it's revealed that Jeff Winger was the one who invented the nickname Fat Neil. Hmm. Similarly here, 
Tommy's heroes let him down. He has posters all over his walls for um, and merch for Stormfront. Uh, it's her social media campaign that gradually wears him down, radicalizes him. He's got a Black Noir poster that's the same comic book cover that Huey passed back in episode one of the season. And he gets so brainwashed that he actually, if you look closely, there's a shot where you can see the clerk's eyes flash a pale blue. Yeah. And we're seeing it from his perspective. Uh, just to give you a sense of how messed up his, his head is now. Uh, the third detail, one of the memes on Tommy's feed shows Congresswoman Newman with a target over her face, very much evoking the Tea Party image with the target over Gabby Giffords district that went around right before she was shot. Uh, Newman also foreshadows herself as a target by referencing Omar's line from The Wire. If we're gonna take a shot at the king, we can't f miss. You come at the king? You best not miss. Yeah, of course, all this setting up that whole head popping attack at her hearing, though it looks like she gets away. Mallory is able to get her out of there, but her assistant Lisa is dunzo. Gone. Another one of Tommy's posters shows Soldier Boy. That's the Captain America style World War II era soup back from the 40s. There's a statue of Soldier Boy in Vought Park. It's a bit similar to the real life statue of, of Captain America that's in Brooklyn. Stan Edgar referenced Soldier Boy back in episode one of the season. And Soldier Boy, we have learned, has been cast uh, with Jensen Ackles playing him. Uh, so we will be seeing that character in season three. Very excited. Mm, yes. Um, so in this episode, uh, Billy Butcher's father is played by John Noble. <laughs> who you might know as Denethor from yeah. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> so great to see these two alongside each other. Carl Urban, of course, played Eomir in Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings. And guys, I'm, you know, I, I might have been reading too much into this by seeing this Lord of the Rings connection, but there was that moment where Mallory tells M.M. Go and never come back. Which for me uh, reminded me of Gollum. Lose Mallory and never come back. <laughs> I guess Mallory yes. is kind of gollumy. Yes. Oh my Eric, God. You sick freak. Um, <laughs> um, so we did get some confirmation about Lamplighter's scandal. Last episode, I theorized that Lamplighter banged not just underage girls, but high school cheerleaders, which is why he got so uneasy when they said he looked like a baton twirling majorette. In this episode, he admits to Huey. Me and this Marathon used to sneak college girls in this way. College girls? Really? They're replying. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Marathon is a speedster soup that A-Train replaced. He was referenced by Ashley recently. You served four years longer than Mr. Marathon. Now that is something, okay? And Newman confirmed Lamplighter actually did sleep with high school cheerleaders. Disgruntled ex-soup, I'm fairly sure he's f half the Sacred Heart cheerleading squad. Okay, Stormfront asks Ryan if he's into normal kid stuff, you know, besides blindside Lego reenactments. Uh, <laughs> but she mentions PewDiePie. So are you into any things that, you know, kids are into? Yeah. Like uh, NBA 2K? PewDiePie? It's just a little example of how plugged in Stormfront is, but also it's probably likely that PewDiePie showed up on Stormfront's radar when that whole white supremacist shooter in New Zealand uh, said yes. subscribe to PewDiePie yes. during the live stream, right? Mm -hmm. Probably. Uh, and there's that little moment where Homelander lists his movies. Uh, let's see, there's Homelander Origins, uh, Homelander Rise of a Hero, Homelander Darkest Day, Homelander Brightest Night. Oh, your dad is so good in Homelander Brightest Night. Darkest Day, Brightest Night is kind of a nod to the Green Lantern oath, but mm -hmm. also the way Stormfront loves him in Brightest Night, as mm -hmm. in brightest K-N-I-G-H-T, mm -hmm. like the whitest warrior who's gonna lead this race war, along with this new Aryan little boy that they're taking back with them. Yes. Yeah. Everything she says. She can't say anything that's not racist. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Black Noir, yes, has a tree nut allergy. Uh, he was foiled with <laughs> Maeve stuffing in an Almond Joy to his mouth. It actually calls back episode four, if you remember, when he made the tech Annika throw away her oh, Almond Joy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now, uh, Nathan Mitchell is the actor who plays Black Noir under the mask. We weren't sure if that was going to be a misdirect and they're going to have a different face there. Mm. Uh, but that actor has a nut allergy himself, which is <laughs> reportedly where this uh, <laughs> twist came from. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, I was gonna say cute, but is it cute? Mm. <laughs> it's cute. It's very deadly, but cute. Yeah. <laughs> cute. Um, the mask is lifted up. We do briefly see the bottom half of his face, and I gotta say that does very much look like Nathan Mitchell's face. Um, mm. Some are saying it looked burned, but now it's interesting. I, I gotta admit, I did get very excited when Blackmore smashed Starlight on the V table because it did break into an L shape, maybe for Lenny. But no, mm. no, unfortunately, no. It looks 
looks like now, um, now, you know, I'm thinking Black Noir could actually be M.M.'s brother because Black Noir has a nut allergy. M.M. has OCD. There could be, and there was that moment where Black Noir was sobbing when he found yeah, out that he had a compound V. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they, maybe there was some kind of connection with his uh, dad's death and it's all kind of linked back because oh. there is going to be some twist with Black Noir. I'm just yeah, waiting to see right. which twist is going to be. Okay, Eagle the Archer becomes the latest outcast of the Church of the Collective, kind of the way Scientology has labeled ex-members like Leah Remini as SPs, suppressive persons, mm. um, and they leak all this bad press about them. Like, if you were to try to Google uh, Leah Remini, the first thing to show up is, uh, like, Leah Remini's a liar.com. Mm-hmm. Oh it's my because God. Scientology buys all the Google AdWords Effective for it. Effective rhetoric. Yeah, it's messed up. Mm. Um, now, if you look closely at the Chiron on the TV special about it, it says Eagle is currently the number one search on soupporn.com. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which I love it. Uh, just another example of this whole porn motif porn yeah, really. dan um now we have arrived to the head popping congressional hearing uh but to me the most interesting thing about this other than you know people's heads randomly exploding stormfront and homelander's reactions i, mm. I watch this so right. many times trying to frame by frame look at their micro expressions i gotta say they do look legitimately stunned and yeah. confused by what's happening yeah. they aren't scared maybe because they've been desensitized to like exploding carnage around them but they are kind of like bemused like Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is odd. Yes. Um, to me, I don't know. It suggests that they aren't behind this or they are at least very good at acting surprised. Right. Yeah. He, the Homelander seemed like genuinely surprised and also not afraid for himself, which, which made me think that they just assume that they're immune to that, even though yeah. like, technically yeah. they could not be like this could be the one way to kill them both but neither of them seem nervous about it at all not Mm -hmm. at all um there is that shot where blood sprays on the portrait of george washington our first Mm -hmm. president suggesting to me this could be a little clue that this head popping might all be part of a coup like you blame Mm -hmm. this on soup terrorists Ah. and you use the same means to assassinate the president the chain of command the same way and then set up homelander to take control of the government in a coup when everyone's freaking out um the opening scene of the season was Stan Edgar negotiating with the Secretary of Defense, who is technically the sixth in the line of presidential succession. Mm. Uh, and I feel like that was all setting up this this whole thing. The opening of this episode was this guy, Tommy, uh, freaking out that soup terrorists are a huge threat. So mm. if that plus, you know, a soup terrorist attack in a congressional hearing, mm. I feel like that could be grounds of a, of a coup, of a yeah, military coup. For, for sure. sure. By Vought. Um, so this sets up our, our question before before we move on with the rest of the episode. We got to talk about who did this. I have five theories I want to run past you guys. All right. So let's start with Cindy. This is one we've talked about before. This is a telekinetic soup from last episode who does burst bods. But... Yeah. I don't know about you guys. To me, her attacks look more implosion-based as opposed to head explosion-based. She goes like this. Yeah, and she does it to the whole body. Yeah. I also got to say, there's some timeline stuff with her. She was locked up when Rainer died, Mm -hmm. and now she's on the loose. I don't think she would have a reason to do this, but I do believe that she might get blamed for this. Ah. Yeah, I kind of took it as, like, in that episode, when Rainer, like, the reason I would think it was her is, like, Stormfront borrowed her from... Uh, Sage Grove or whatever Ooh, it's called and then yeah. took her to kill Rainer and then put her back. Maybe. And That's yeah. possible. Yeah. I it don't is know, possible. I mean, I don't know. It's uh, certainly a lead. I'm sure they want us yeah. to think it's her. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the second suspect is a guy I'm calling Beardy. Mm. So there is an extra in the background of this hearing room. He has a distinct beard who looks like he's kind of looking at several of the victims right as their heads explode. Wow. Mm. Which I might be reading into it. I did kind of feel like this is a, a true crime show and I'm looking at the, the town hall meeting for the yeah. Golden State killer yeah. and be like, him? <laughs> the guy standing <laughs> in the background looks suspect. Maybe a reach. Uh, let's talk about Alistar Adana, the Church of the Collective Head. So, things do kind of work in favor the, for the church, right? Shockwave specifically was killed be, mm. and, and then Alistair did say he wanted to get A-Train back on the 7. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, that kind of clears the path a little bit. There's a moment where when the Deep was watching on TV, he, his, he checked his head. Mm. Like, yeah. he's worried it could happen <laughs> to him. Um, uh, there was also, if you remember, Stormfront did mention that she used to be a member of the Church of the Collective back in the day. There's all kinds of reasons why it could help them. There's also some reasons why why would they want to bring down Vought. Uh, Mm. You'd think they'd want to uh, get involved with Vought, but maybe that's why they 
killed Vogelbaum because Vogelbaum yeah. was about to, um, you know, bring down the company. Ah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a likely possibility. Maybe the fresca is involved. Maybe the fresca has something in it that protects you from specific uh, sonic frequencies that can blow up your brain. I no. don't know. Maybe the Everybody fresca is just a random thing. <laughs> yeah, we should all be drinking Fresca. Yes. Um, to me, the most logical option is Stan Edgar. So this guy's been very quiet. And yeah. if you think about it, Rainer did die the moment she mentioned uh, what she believed to be Stan Edgar's plan for a coup. Mm. I'm thinking what's happening is what I was mentioning earlier. I think he could be through some means, maybe himself, maybe through some kind of technology or another soup he's controlling, uh, popping uh, people's heads, uh, state authorities, Rainer, Congress people, people can bring down Vought in order to protect Vought, but also use this as grounds to set up Homelander to take over the White House. I wonder if the fact that they're also afraid of him makes me think that either he is super yeah. or, he, or he has some sort of technology that makes him super, you know, like. Yeah. yeah, I don't really have as much of the how for Stan Edgar, but right. I do have more of the why, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. like mm-hmm. he definitely has the most to gain. Sure. Totally. Um, Yep. Now, um, I'm going to give you one last wild card option here. Ashley Barrett. Mm. <laughs> Poor Ashley, losing her hair this season. There yeah. was this, she seemed the most freaked out in that room. She screamed at Homelander, do something. What the f***? You're supposed to be superheroes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> Very interesting. And then there was that weird moment earlier when Maeve told her, For once in your life, be a f- human being. And then she kind of took to heart. I don't know. The next time we start in the episode, pop, 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 pop. I, mm. <laughs> I, to be honest, I don't have a how or a why, though. Mm. I just think she was interesting to watch this episode. Yeah. Yeah, totally. For sure. So we'll see. Let us know down below who you think was behind this uh, and what you think of the theories we presented. We're going to continue talking about some of the deeper questions we had this episode before we head into the finale. But first, we've got plenty more to talk about. But first, I want to talk about sleep. I want to talk about slumber. I want to talk about laying your sweet head down on a comfortable pillow, but what comes next? Your shoulders, your back, your calves, and your feet all need to lay on something, and that's where Helix Sleep comes in. There are more reasons than ever why you might not be getting good sleep right now. God knows. The Jets lost to the Broncos last night facing a third-string quarterback. Only an idiot would have bet on the Jets, and I am that idiot, and I didn't sleep well. But your mattress should not be a reason why you're losing sleep. Helix Sleep makes personalized mattresses made in America, shipped straight to your door with free, no-contact delivery, free returns, and 100 nights worth of a sleep trial. Imagine that, a personalized mattress so comfortable, it's like when you lay down in it, someone hugs you and says, there you go, Tommy. Just one in this bed tonight, same as the last four (laughs) years. That makes sense. (laughs) All right, and 100 nights, if you don't know if your mattress is working for you after 100 nights, you just don't sleep. That's my opinion. You're not a good sleeper. It's not the mattress's fault. It becomes a you problem at that point. So (laughs) to choose a mattress, Helix has made a two minute quiz that matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. To choose a mattress, Helix made a two-minute quiz that matches your body type. Two minutes worth of quizzes, even I could take that, and I failed three grades, and four more after that. A total of seven (laughs) failed grades. I basically did middle school and high school twice. I was 30 years old when I graduated, and most definitely, (laughs) the largest boy in my class. Eric, you sleep on a Helix mattress. Why don't you talk about how great that is for you? Oh, I love my Helix mattress. I yes. say that um, c- with complete sincerity. It has, um, I've had different dreams now because mm. normally I don't dream that much because I've had such restless sleep. But now with like Helix, it's like I'm getting this deep, deep sleep and I'm like learning things about myself. I'm mm-hmm. processing my day. I'm seeing the future. I'm adjusting my <laughs> life as a result of it. Like the sleep I'm getting, I feel like I wake up and I'm Rip Van Winkle and I've time traveled. Ah, yes. But do you yes. dream of Tommy? Oh, oh, constantly. Tommy and I sleep on the same Helix mattress. Yes, that's right. We do. That's actually true. I also own a Helix mattress. It's it's feet. one long Helix mattress yes. that spans the we city. Sleep, we sleep yeah, gra- yeah, yeah. grandparents in Willy Wonka style. We sleep like Charlie <laughs> Buck. <laughs> I, I have to say, this mattress is three feet away from me right now, and it's taking every ounce of self-control I have not to dive in and take a slumber. Now, I know what you're thinking. I always talk about sleeping alone. Oh, he's always alone. He's complaining. No, 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 my friends. This is by design. I don't want anyone else in this comfortable bed with me. It's that good. Okay, I could have millions of people in this bed with me. Look at me. Listen to me. I, there are people lining up to get in this bed, and I say That's no. Right. No, 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 no. Let's talk more 
more about Helix, though. They were awarded the number one best mattress pick in 2020 by GQ magazine, Wired magazine, and Apartment Therapy. And you know who else gave them number one? Tom Bechtold of Tom Bechtold Publications. Just go to helixsleep.com slash underground, take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty. That's a decade worth of guarantees. And you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. But you will. And imagine the look on the guy's face when you send back your Helix mattress. He's going to go, what a fool. This person is impossible to please. That's what he'll think. That's what they're all going to think. They're all going to laugh at you. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash underground. That's Helix. H E L I X sleep.com slash underground for up to $200. Wow. What a bargain. What a deal. What a night's sleep. What a life. Eric, shall we go into some deeper questions? Marina? Yeah, let's go into some deep. Are you up for it. some deeper questions, my friends? Hell let's yeah. talk deep, about it. Deep, deep, deep. Okay. <laughs> Question number one. What do we think was going through Butcher's mind in the final shot of the episode? Yeah, that was interesting, right? They're asking Butcher, what do we do? What do we do? Right. To me, yeah. the only option they have left on the table for them is for the boys to take Compound V yep. and power themselves up and yep. then fight one-on-one -on -one with yep. the seven. You know what is a stupid answer? <laughs> um, you know how, you know how uh, Butcher threatened to kill that guy's family? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now he's like, now I gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kept a promise. Uh, I made, a keep promise. It, made a promise. I gotta keep it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of work. Uh, yeah, I I think um, I wonder if he thinks that compound like getting super powered might be the only way they could potentially be safe. Like in his yeah. mind, he's like, if we come across whoever is popping these heads. Maybe if we have powers, we can prevent that, or we'll have some yeah. sort of... I mean, I know that uh, Shockwave's head was exploded, so obviously soups can be killed by this person, yeah. but I don't know. Maybe... He, I think you're right. He's. I think I think in his head, he was like, it's time for the nuclear option, which is... Yeah. Maybe uh, he was like, maybe if I grow a giant dick, my wife will take me back. <laughs> yes! And, and, I don't and, even have to leave the couch. Just honestly... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and, and who hasn't asked themselves that hypothetical? If only. Uh, question two. We, and our weekly, a snake. <laughs> if, if only I could grow a 17-foot dick. Then my girlfriend would take me back. Weekly Noir Watch, guys. What twist with Black yeah, yeah. Noir do we expect uh, next episode? We, we, we assume it's going to be revealed next episode. I don't know. I feel like we kind of, like the Black Noir intrigue of who his secret identity is has kind of lost steam for me in terms of like the mm. mystery of it like I mean he certainly had memorable appearances this season but I would have expected a little more like I don't know pers I, 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 yeah maybe yeah some more clues at this point yeah. whoever it is this is going to be a shock you know which maybe is right. maybe yeah. is the right way what do you guys think guys what if because there's been no references to it at all like we, they really are leaving us in the dark um what if he's Stan Edgar's son mm. because oh. he would have put somebody into uh, the program, right? Of like being a superhero. And cause you have to wonder like, why is he there? Like, why is he so invested in this like white supremacist thing? And like, mm. mm, he is not white. So maybe he's like, okay, fine. Like I'll be a part of this to like have control over it and like have my son be part of it mm. as like part of a long-term strategy but that's like an out there theory mm. no i could see i could definitely see that like because we know a uh, black noir reports directly yeah. to stan edgar i mean they all he's all their boss but he has like a side channel with mm. uh, black noir specifically so if mm -hmm. they could be related yeah i could see that being the case yeah um but I, i'm starting to feel like if it's not mother's milk's brother you know because that's the one other lingering yeah. mystery that they set up earlier in the season i feel like we're gonna get some closure on that yeah. this mm -hmm. next episode i if it's not one of those things yeah i could see them punching it to season three next question do we think ryan will turn on home 
Homelander or Stormfront. But first, I want to ask this a little mini question here. Was there a moment in this episode, in that scene, where you thought Ryan was going to kill Becca by accident? Oh, like, for sure. A, I yeah. thought he was going to saw her in half with, like, laser eyes or something. Yeah, really, he, she holds him back. Yeah. yeah, she holds him back, and then he looks down at her hand like, yeah. bitch, yeah. get your hand off me. Yeah, like, yeah, one of those yeah. was like, no, 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 Ryan. She's a good character. We don't want her to die. She's right. the best thing in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was worried. I was worried. But I do think at this point, he's more likely to turn on Homelander or Stormfront. I want to see... He's already kind of turned on Homelander a little bit. Right. Yeah. I, I want to see him power up. Like, that could be a, something that they don't yeah. really suspect to happen. And then... And, w- and will his name be Homeboy? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he's, he's going to turn on Stormfront, and it's going to sound exactly like this. You're not my mom! And then he's going to... Yeah, Do push her into a, a wood chipper. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that would be awesome. Oddly enough, the only thing that will kill her. Yeah. Yes. Part of me doesn't want Homelander or Stormfront to lose this season. Like, I yeah. kind of want oh, yeah. the darkest reality to come Needs true to be for them. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, you don't want to lose a good villain. Uh, right. You know. I want to see how how bad things can get. All right, and finally, guys, uh, next episode is the season finale. Tears, tears of sorrow as. As our season comes to an end, let's take our final bets. Who lives? Who dies? Uh, what's the season cliffhanger going to be? What's our predictions now? Um, uh, I think everyone's going to make it except for Ashley because she's too. Um, <laughs> like we've seen her be th- go through so much, and yeah. like she just there's no way she crosses the finish line. Like yeah. there's she she just can't. Yeah. She's Moses. She's not going to get there. And then also, I think Maeve is going to not make oh. it through the season, but mm. I think that she's going to die in a really heroic way like truly heroic and like finally heroic right because yeah. she's been portraying herself as a hero but on the DL like not acting like one so I right. think the way that the rest of the seven and the world finds out that no she is actually a hero is dying trying to kill Homelander and Stormfront mm. interesting yeah I could see that too I mean yeah. Maeve's arc this season has been so tragic and mm-hmm. I think yeah unfortunately she's gonna get scapegoated for the flight 37 stuff yeah um, but I do think the in terms of like how it's gonna leave season three uh, I would not be surprised if we had like a House of Cardsian final scene in the Oval Office Resolute Desk bodies everywhere and Homelander yeah. just yeah. F- a storm front on that desk or something mm, horrible. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think for one thing that I feel like is mo- especially with all of the season three news that we've gotten is this is definitely gearing up to be a Empire Strikes Back season two where we do not feel good about our heroes chances right. at the end of <laughs> yeah. it. I think it's going to be yeah. a real uh, depressing cliffhanger. I have, a, I think we could potentially lose one of the boys. I think yeah. there's been a lot of like tortured soul shit out of Frenchie this year uh oh, yeah. i think there's yeah. you know i i think uh mallory certainly feels like her days are numbered i i think that the not that she's a bo- one of the boys but you know she's certainly down with the she's cause i think it could be um i think it, I, I think it's i think whatever the outcome is it's not going to like season three is going to be uh, uh, uh them fighting back but i think season two is definitely going to go down to the soups i think they're gonna they're gonna yeah. claim victory by the end of it now my favorite part of the show the most heartwarming element of the show the part that really just sends me off into my weekend with a little pep in my step kill counts marina is going to catch us up on the kill counts for this episode and the season long standings as a recap heading into next season's finale marina what do you got for us i got you guys covered in blood (laughs) all right Uh, (laughs) okay so there were some big question marks um in the kill list this this week like is black noir are still alive because you can survive mm. some of those allergy attacks mm. if you had yeah. like he had an EpiPen maybe he was he had reaching for one. the EpiPen I think yeah. he, he got there maybe he had yeah maybe he had another one in his pocket if he's really smart mm-hmm. um and so is he still around and who is doing the head popping right which, right, which right. we talked about so Tommy has one uh the guy good who job Tommy the- thanks guys <laughs> <laughs> who killed the convenience store clerk, which is very sad, but very good sad. for my actor friend. Yeah. All mm-hmm. yes. uh, right. And the lamplighter has one kill for himself. Ah. Uh, really making a statement there. And then we have uh, the mystery killer, right? The unknown head popper with four, <laughs> with 14 kills. Woo! Wow. So 
<laughs> yep. So at the congressional hearing, there was just the sound of popcorn really going yeah. on the stove. And you had a tally mark for every one of those pops. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the visual, the ones that we saw on screen, and then also the ones that we just heard, mm. um, those were counted as well. Um, and then also including Shockwave. Yeah. Um, nice. So for the for the season overall, right? So we're going mm -hmm. into the finale. So let's get a recap of the total kill count for the entire season. All so right. So Starlight, Frenchie, and Love Sausage each have mm -hmm. one. Lamplighter has two. Mm -hmm. but Butcher has two, mm. um, but in my heart he has three because he tried to kill that <laughs> baby. I'll never forgive him. Oh right. Um, so Kenji has at least three, but we're not we're not definitive about who actually lived and died because some were hospitalized. So we'll give him at least three. Um, Cindy from Sage Grove has between three and four. I want to say four because she she's so scary when she goes like yeah. this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give my girl credit. Mm. Um, Homelander and Black Noir each have five. Uh, mm. Kimiko has six. Go girl. And the <laughs> unknown head popper <laughs> has fifteen. And then <laughs> this is insane. This is insane, you guys. Stormfront, our white supremacist Nazi girlfriend from <sighs> fifty years ago or however long mm -hmm. it is, has sixty seven kills. Jeez. Oh, plus six million Jews in the Holocaust. You yes. gotta add that every time. Every Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah. So she's a monster. She is terrible, and I don't feel bad that she misses her daughter. I hope her daughter dies a thousand deaths just to oh. make Stormfront sad. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. She's yeah. a terrible person. Yeah. She. Yeah. She. She is truly an awful person. No. No arguments there. Uh, oh. Agreed. Do you okay? But I have to toot my own horn for a second. Toot, 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 toot. Because if you guys remember from a couple episodes, I I literally predicted exactly who she was. You guys were like, "Who's Liberty?" And I was like, "She's the original Nazi. Like she's oh, the original." Yeah. I don't yep. know if you guys remember that, but I'll right. never do, forget do, do, do. it. Toot right. that horn, girl. <laughs> do, 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 do. I was told my pantomiming of trombones was wrong because I do this and this, whereas trombone yes. is really yeah. just no. this. Yes, I don't know what I don't know what this is, but uh, it's not yeah, normal. This just is tickle like, in the top. There's a little I, there's a little caterpillar on the top that yeah, I'm petting. Yeah. Yes. When I say well, to my own horn, I mean flute. Ah uh, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> I mean. I mean car horn. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I've got to toot my own horn, so I'm going to head out of here. That's our oh. show. So great to <laughs> chat with you, Eric and Marina, always. My dear friends, my worst enemies. Tune in every yeah. week for our reactions to the latest Boys episode. Subscribe to Boys Undergrounds on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll get the show earlier than the video version, and it's a huge help to us at New Rockstars. Reminder to join our official Discord by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash new rockstars. Our Discord will be fielding questions that we'll answer on this show. You want to be there to be part of the conversation. Plus, every now and then, I chime in something inappropriate. And as mentioned, a very nice moderator then tells me to stop and then I leave. Uh, in shame. You can follow me at Tommy Bechtold. Follow Eric at EA Voss. Follow Marina at Marina Mastros. Follow new rockstars on socials. Follow that person that you've been interested in on their social media. Follow a big man home from the grocery store to see what he eats to get so big. And subscribe here on YouTube to get too much information on all the stuff you care about. Good night, mates. Good. <laughs> <laughs>